Today on Haunt and Culture, we slide headfirst into the crazy world of the sliders. ghouls and beasts and welcome to another haunt culture today we're going to be talking about sliders sliders are like the rock stars of haunts these are the monsters you see with knee pads and they go sliding across the ground sometimes creating sparks it's one effective scare that's why today i'm excited to introduce my good friend and longtime co-haunt monster tj hi <laughs> TJ has been a haunt slider for over a decade. He has a great passion for the art of sliding. Most recently, he has become a slider trainer. Thanks for being here, bud. Yeah, absolutely, not a problem. Cool, cool. All right, so what first attracted you to sliding? So initially, before I actually started working at Scarewinds, me and my family, because we, we're locals, and so like we would go out and visit Scarewinds initially, um, way back before we ever worked there and just walking around, like going through the mazes and seeing the different scare zones, you could kind of sort of tell who like the, like, like you mentioned, like the rock star monsters were the ones that really got a lot of attention and like, were just awesome at what they did. And seeing the sliders was always one of those things where I was like, look at those guys, look at them go and like all the stuff they're doing. It's, it was really awesome to watch. And so I always kind of like, I, I kind of made the deal with myself. And I always thought that if I ever worked at Scarewinds, I would want to try and get to that point. And, you know, lo and behold, I ended up getting a job at Scarewinds. And then my second year in, they, they kind of tossed some pads at me. And they're like, see if you can do it. Like, like let's, let's go for it and see what happens. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what was that, that first year of sliding like? So... <laughs> At the time and this is not a shot at anybody in particular or anything like that but at the time there wasn't really like a solid trainer program it was a lot of trial and error and a lot of either float or sink kind of thing so like when they gave me my pads i got like a, a quick very very brief tutorial on like this is what you're supposed to do this is where you're supposed to do it don't do it over here okay now go and just see what happens kind of thing and it was, like I said, it was a lot of trial and error and a lot of kind of figuring out, okay, can I do this? Can I not do that? But I, I just, I was ecstatic. The, the really funny thing about it is, though, when that season, I was actually fresh out of knee surgery. Um, I, had, I had to have some work done on my right knee, which is actually the one that I drop on when I slide. And I was, I was a few months out. I'd gone through, like, uh, physical therapy and stuff like that. So, like, I, I had range of motion back and things like that, but they told me, they were like, if you're going to do this, you're going to have to get it signed off by your doctor, uh, by your physical therapist, and by your parents, regardless of the fact that you're of age. It doesn't matter because that's, you know, a lot of money tied up into a surgery. Um, and so I, I never did get it signed off by my doctor because I never could get back in touch with them. But my physical therapist was ecstatic about it. They were just super, super happy about what I was trying to do. And like, I, I kind of like sat them down. I was like, you do understand what I'm talking about, right? Like I'm throwing myself at the ground on this knee. <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 we, we totally get it. We understand. But we think that it's going to be a really good exercise. It's going to really push it to its limits and, and really like kind of get it worked out. And they were, they were just like, yeah, go for it. Why not? Like, what do you got to lose? <laughs> Well, my knee, but you know, that's nah, I don't worry about that. Um, but my parents, they were kind of they they knew right off the bat, like, there's no getting him away from this concept. If, if he's gonna do it, he's gonna do it. I mean, there's no way around it. So, there it was. I just kind of quite literally fell into it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dang, I, 
I don't think you ever told me that story. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the feeling you get in a perfect slide? Like slick bricks, you know? <laughs> so, I, it's kind of hard to explain, to be completely honest with you. Um, that one of the, like, I guess you could say adjectives that come to mind is freeing. It's very freeing to, like, really get down on the ground and just and hit that, that nice, smooth coast. And, and just going with it, it is it is really, really enjoyable. Now, however, that, that joy can end very quickly if you hit the wrong surface, and, and at that point, it's no longer fun. The way that I've always kind of thought of it was like, you know, when they get up, like, up in the air, and, like, they're doing their tricks and stuff like that, just that kind of freedom of that moment where you're just like, this is awesome. That's kind of how I, how I like, kind of draw the line on that and, and just kind of draw the parallels for it. So warming up with sliding. Now I actually was going through some old scare ones footage and I happened to come across when we would be leaving the water park and you and Sammy and some of the other sliders would be just going <laughs> across. So uh, is that just to kind of be sure you're everything's in place or? Yeah, just... more or less. That's, I mean, cause we do like our stretches and we do our warm ups while we're in monster central and stuff like that. And uh, but those those initial slides when we first hit the blacktop, um, where, which is the area that we can slide on, fresh out of Monster Central and in that kind of area, it was a good place to just kind of drop down, do a, a quick you know a couple of slides just to see how it feels, you know, see if everything's in place, everything's kind of tightened down the way that you want it to, or if it's too tight and you need to loosen something up. Because there, there's nothing more annoying than like getting halfway into the night and realizing that you should have loosened something up, and it's like. You know, rubbed your leg the wrong way or, or something along those lines. So th those first couple of slides are, are really good for just making sure that you're in a, in a great space for all your gear and just making sure that you're, you're stretched out properly because you'll, you'll feel it within a first, the first couple of slides. You'll, you'll automatically feel it and realize, I probably should have stretched this a little bit more. I should have done this a little bit better. So, yeah, th those initial ones are, are just kind of like test runs to make sure that we're, we're feeling all right. So... What are the dangers of sliding? Have you or someone you know gotten seriously hurt by sliding? I personally have never had any moment where, like, I was, I guess you could say, seriously injured. Um, I can say that a lot of times, like, the biggest things you have to watch out for is, like, say you're sliding and maybe, like, one of your pads will shift on you or something along those lines. And at that point, you have to worry about, like, your, your leg itself, not the pad, but the your leg itself rubbing the ground and we call it road rash. You get road rash from it. it's big old, you know, like raspberry on your leg kind of thing. That's usually about the biggest gist of it. We're, we're really keen on making sure that the sliders stay in good health and, and everything's still in, in working order because our, our pads get really gross after a certain amount of time and you get like sweat and grime and stuff like that. And it's really important to make sure that you're not constantly putting some sort of open wound in that pad night after night and constantly getting more and more dirt and grime and sweat and nastiness in it. For me, like I said, I've never really gotten seriously injured. I have definitely had a moment where like, we call it bailing out. Like when a slide, like say you're, you're laying it, you're sliding in, somebody steps out in front of you in order to keep from hitting the guest. Sometimes you just have to kind of like either barrel roll or like you just roll out of it. You just bail on the slide. Um, so that, that, that can get kind of dicey sometimes depending on what surface you're on and, and just the general area that you're working in. But now, like, we've, in all honesty, we've run a pretty good ship around Scarewinds. I don't think there's ever been anything that was like, oh, my God, like, we need to we need to take care of this kind of moment. Well, uh, you were kind of talking about the gear. Could you kind of elaborate on the gear that you use for sliding? Generally speaking, when it comes to sliding, there's, there's some basics that you always have to have. It's going to be your knee pads. Um, we do require our sliders to wear elbow pads um, just for the safety sake of it. Because like I said, if you ever have to bail out on a, on a slide or anything like that, you want to make sure that you have protection for something that might, you know, you might fall on or catch yourself on. We wear steel toed boots. Um, that is what helps kind of create sparks at times. We also make sure that we're always wearing our gloves, which have metal fingers on them. Um, and we've, we're, we're kind of in flux on a few other pieces of the equipment. Um, we have worn wrist guards in the past. There are concepts of maybe doing something different from that in the, in the near future for our next seasons. So, but 
mainstays is going to be the gloves. You've got to have the boots. You've got to have the knee pads, obviously. And we do require the elbow pads. A few different brands out there that we tend to suggest to our sliders. Ones that we, that I personally suggest more often than not is going to be the, it's a brand called ProTech. ProTech are the pads that I use. Um, a lot of the sliders at other haunts and other industries, they'll use uh, what's called Smith Scabs. Those are really, really good quality as well. Either one of those are going to do your are, are going to do you really well as far as lasting throughout the season, giving you good slides, stuff like that. We definitely tend to suggest avoiding like Walmart brands and things like that because they're they're just not going to last you very long. Going off of that, have you ever heard of some kind of strange equipment that maybe sliders have used in other haunts? Can tell you. From when sliding was first created at Knott's Berry Farms, some of the original sliders, in order to create the, the, the concept, the effect of sliding, they were using, like, crushed coffee cans, and they were holding them in their hands instead of wearing actual gloves with the metal fingers. They would hold these, these crushed coffee cans. They'd bend them into, like, handles, and they would use that. They'd hold them and slide with that. Um, I did get word from another slider one time where... Uh, in order to make their pads last longer, because the, the cap on the pad itself is just like really thick, hard plastic. So over time, constantly sliding, you start to wear it down, you'll wear it thin, you'll get holes in it and stuff like that. And he, he did tell me that uh, one way to combat that, they would take old Tupperware and they would kind of, they take a heat gun to it, melt it, and then reform it on top of the existing cap that's on a pad. And they would just keep layering that kind of stuff. And I thought that was kind of interesting, and you know, just old Tupperware that you can get just about anywhere, honestly. And you can melt that down and kind of reshape it. If you had the freedom to add anything to your 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 costume or, or your sliding equipment, what what would you do? Just complete freedom. Complete freedom. Oof. Oh boy. <laughs> One thing in particular that I, I definitely want Scarewinds to try and, and kind of keep making steps towards of including flints. Um, where it really like it's it's like a, a flint stick or flints that you can glue onto your shoes, and that really throws a lot of sparks because just the steel toe on its own in your boot, it'll throw some sparks as long as you put the right amount of pressure on it. But if you have like a flint stick involved, then it really it really throws a lot of sparks, and I'm, you know it's just one of those things where it's a it's a concept that needs to be tested a little bit further for our particular haunt. I know that other haunts are already using them extensively. Yeah, I would say flints for sure. Being in charge of the sliders, what what do you look for in a good slider? So, I mean, there's there's a lot of things to look for when it comes to, you know, oh, I want to be a slider. Um, I know that there's a common misconception that a lot of people think you have to be like this skinny as a rail kind of kid. And you have to already be athletic and stuff like that. That's not really all that accurate. Um, I mean, we can we can get anybody in pads. I know there's there's a lot of folks out there, a lot of different body shapes and types and, and things like that. There's a lot of people out there that have learned how to slide and, and they're very good at it. So that that is a common misconception where you have to be, you know, you already have to have like that kind of skater body or whatever. That's that's not really true. But it's it's just like it's a dedication to the to the craft, to the art form. You have to be willing to kind of push yourself past your comfort zone and really you know, get used to the idea that you're going to be throwing yourself at the ground. It's, it's not something that your body's really going to be like, yeah, this is awesome. Like you really have to get past that, that breaking point and just, and really focus in on that. It, I will tell you, it, it takes a lot of stamina. It takes a lot of endurance. It's not an easy thing to do. So again, while we, while we are very accepting of, of anybody that wants to try it, you do have to realize this is something that you're going to be doing all night. And so you know, it gets tiresome after a while. Your joints start to hurt. You just, you have to be willing to put in the work. You have to be willing to, to really get out there and, and try some things. So uh, earlier you mentioned it, uh, the documentary Sliders of Ghost Town Origins. Really so cool. Really cool documentary. I've only recently just watched it, but I know for years you've been recommending that movie to Sliders to watch before you know the season gets going. For those who haven't seen it yet, the documentary follows the history and experience of the Sliders at Knott's Berry Farms. Um, one thing I absolutely loved from a filming standpoint, the cinematography of the Sliders. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. I wish I could film like that. Wow, <laughs> it is... 
it is beautiful to watch them in that movie. That's my one of my favorite parts of it. It's also very, very informative. So the movie defines sliders, a skilled individual who uses the knee, toe, and hand protection in order to slide across the ground and uses the skill in order to startle or enhance their scaring technique in a Halloween event. Do you agree with that? Or is there anything you would add? I mean, like, like I tell my sliders during training is like, again, like you described it, I, I tell them that this is, this is very much a rock star situation. Like you know, nobody else in the haunt does what we do. One of the lines that I really like that uh, one of the sliders mentioned in it, you really got to watch the crowd. It's an entire living organism. Watch how things move and how things flow. I mean, personally, even just as a, a, any monster, that is some solid advice. Like when you're dealing with a large crowd, it's really important to kind of watch it and, and, and see where it goes. Um, at, at a sliding standpoint, I imagine that's being sure you have the space, targeting people. Um, uh, go ahead. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of those things. I that's that's one part of my training that I, I definitely uh, I nail on a lot here in here in the slider program in slider training is I, I make sure that they understand just like you said it is is very much the crowd itself is very much a living creature. I mean, because one minute you'll have what I call a perfect runway where it's just it's a, an open field. There's nobody walking. You got clear straight away for you know, fifty some feet, and within a few seconds that can disappear, you know, a, a building like a maze can let out or, or, you know, a family can suddenly come out of a bathroom or a doorway or a shop or any, anything really. And you lose that runway. Um, so that is definitely one thing that I, I stress to the sliders during training is you've got to understand you're never going to have more or less. Usually you're not going to have that perfect runway where it's just an open field for sliding. And so you have to learn how to navigate that and how to, you know, read the crowd and read the movement. A, a lot of times the crowds will tend because the sliders, when we're sliding, we make a very particular noise. And a lot of folks that come out to haunts, they're repeat customers and things like that. So they're, they kind of have that knowledge of what it sounds like. And a lot of times the good guests will move because they hear you coming and they know that something's happening. So they tend to get out of the way. Um, but then, you know, sometimes you just have people that lock up, you know, like that kind of flight or fight reflex kicks in and they just, they freeze, and they don't know what to do. So you do have to be mindful of that kind of stuff. And one of the things that I teach my sliders during training is what I call quick stop. And that's where you have to be able, no matter how far into a slide that you are, you have to be able to get back up on your feet in that instant and keep moving. Um, cause if you, if you come up too close to somebody and you're, you know, right in their face, you're liable to get hit depending upon what the reaction might be. So I, I make sure that my sliders understand that if they ever pop up in front of somebody, they, they need to be at least arm's length away. And that's not their arm's length. That is the guest's arm's length because different arms have different lengths. And so while you might think that you're far enough away, if you come up on somebody and they've got longer arms than you, you're still liable to get hit. Um, so that those quick stops are lifesavers for the sliders. You got to make sure that you, you know how to get up off the ground very quickly, because that that crowd, the flow of it will change in an instant, and you just you got to be ready for it. Yep, yep. Wise words there. <laughs> and then the one other thing I really liked in the movie that they mention is that first years don't just get handed the role of sliding. They have to be uh, basically a street monster, which is kind of similar to what we have as scare force. They, they're dependent to create their character and be able to develop that because, and we even say this too, is you don't depend on the pads as your whole scare. You, you've got to create a character with that. Yeah. For our haunt in particular, I, I know that, that the no first years in sliding was a rule there for a while. Um, at this point, I think they've become a little bit more lenient on that, which is, you know, Depending on, because we've had some sliders that were first years that came in and just rocked it. I mean, just hit it, hit the ground running. They were they were awesome. They did a great job. And they loved it, and that's great. Like I, I don't have a problem with that at all. I, I definitely wouldn't mind seeing that rule for our particular haunt put back in place, 
just simply because, yes, while you may be good at sliding, that doesn't mean that you're good at character work. That doesn't mean that you're good at reading the crowd. That doesn't mean that you're good at being scary. You're just good at being athletic or, you know, having the, the stamina to do what sliding requires. You know, kind of like what you said, I, I, I definitely agree with the concept of, of having a first year be just a regular monster first. And then that next year, their second year, being able to come in and say, I want to try out for sliders. Because at that point, they have the knowledge, they have some experience, they have the capability of saying, yes, I can read a crowd. Yes, I know what a good target is, and I know what a bad target is. And that's that's really, really important, because you slide up on the wrong person, you, you know, it could be a problem. There's both sides of the equation on that one, though, because there, there have been some first years that just came in and, and were amazing. So it, it's it's a tough field, it's a tough thing to kind of work with. But I definitely say it's not a bad concept to have that rule in place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, character development's definitely a big, big thing. So now we are down to a segment of the show that I call Scare Stories. Oh my God. All right, this is the part of the show where the guest gets to share either their scares or scares they've witnessed in uh, being at Haunt. All right, so TJ, you got some stories for us? So, uh, I mean, it's kind of funny because after, what, 11, 12 years, somewhere in that range, I, you know, there's so many. I mean, they just start to bleed into one giant season altogether. It's crazy. One of my favorite memories just of Haunt in general, um, at the end of the 2019 season at Scarewinds, I kind of worked it out with management and leadership. And I went around and I collected all of the sliders from all over the park, every area that there were sliders, I, I got everybody together in one spot and we did like this huge slider showcase. And it was the way that we ended the night. We took like the last, I think it was like two hours of the night of the final night of Scarewinds and we just let the sliders go crazy. And it was probably some of the most fun I have ever had at Haunt was just being able to get everybody together because once the season starts, all of the sliders kind of get divvied up to where they're supposed to be theme-wise for their, their scare zones and everything. So we don't get all of the sliders back together again once we get past training. Un unfortunately, like, you know, some of your other fellow sliders, they don't get to see the, the progression. They don't get to see the growth in some of the newer sliders as the season goes on. So that, that big get-together, that big showcase that we did on the final night it was it was just awesome we had so much fun just doing all sorts of stuff you know just trying out new things just playing around having fun it was it was really really awesome to see everybody together and just having a great time that's probably one of my fondest memories of, of scarewin so far is being able to be the one in charge to put that into place and get everybody together and just have that much fun i will definitely say another one of my really really fond memories of sliding in general was the first time I ever accomplished doing a jump. Once you start to kind of get a feel for sliding, you can learn how to kind of, I call it jolting your body, um, but you learn how to just pop up off the ground and, and kind of bunny hop a little bit. And once you get really good at bunny hopping, then you can go into like full blown jumps where you're like clearing a good bit of distance and, and you know, getting some height off the ground. And uh, I'll never forget the first time I ever I ever dropped down. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna try out a, a jump. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can do it. And when I actually did it, and then I stuck the landing, and I was just like, oh, I did it! Oh God! <laughs> and and you know, so from there it was like every season I wanted to, I wanted to push it more and try more and try and do this and, and do that and do this and do that and like constantly have that growth towards doing bigger and better and cooler things. You nail that trick. You nail that jump. It's just you get so pumped up over it. It's, it's really, really fun. And then there, there is one story in particular that I, I kind of hold on to, and it's it's kind of at somebody else's expense, but it's funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I first started sliding, I was in I was inside of a maze. I was in an indoor maze, and the area that I was sliding in was it was kind of fashioned after like Frankenstein's laboratory, and for those of you that, that know the maze, it's called uh, Silver Screams. Uh, but when in, in 2010, when I was sliding inside of it, 
that was that's what it was. It was Silver Scream Cinemas. And then the next season in 2011, I was at I actually I had gotten moved to sliding outside outdoors, and and I wasn't trapped inside of a maze anymore. And so they asked me to train one of the new sliders that was going to be inside of Silver Screams. They asked me if I would show him the ropes and show him what, how I did it at, when I was inside of the maze. My particular trick that I would do in the room, I would shoot down the walkway as guests were coming into the room. So I was coming at them. And I, I would time it just right, and I'd shoot across the walkway, and then I would do a 180, and I would slide underneath the table on the far side of the room. And then I would push off the wall with my feet and I'd come back out at guests, kind of smack at their feet and stuff like that as they were going through the room. And I had it down to a science. Like I had the timing right. I knew when to turn around. I knew how to keep, you know, you get down low and you go underneath the table and then you pop back out. Well, then that season when I was training the new guy, you know, I told him, I said, you, and I showed him a number of times, you got to drop right here. You got to make sure that you're timing it just right for when the people come in the room, and you got to make sure you keep your head down. You got to stay low as you're sliding backwards underneath the table. And the first time that he dropped down and tried it, and unfortunately, it was actually in front of guests. Like we were operating at the time, and he, he dropped down. He got the 180 just right, but he didn't get down low enough. And he ended up hitting the back of his head on the table, <laughs> and it kind of laid him out a little bit. Like he just. Because he hit, it, he hit it with some pretty good force. I mean, it didn't hurt him or anything like that, but like the, the sheer force of it kind of laid him out on the ground. And the guests coming into the room, they were like, what just happened? This kid just laid himself out. And I'm standing there in the corner, you know, watching over him, make sure he doesn't get hurt. Oops. And uh, I just kind of had to stand there and be like, ah, I'm a scary monster. <laughs> trying my hardest not to laugh because like I, I know it's it's really bad to laugh at somebody who just got hurt but like i tried so hard to make sure you understood to stay low but sure enough on that first try right in front of guests he just whapped his head on that table just as hard as he could because he, he had some momentum and it was just it was so funny and i was trying so hard not to laugh while there were guests there in the maze i, uh, I could imagine the sound was just Excellent. <laughs> it was it was rough. It was so rough. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that's a good one. Well, do you have anything else you want to add about about sliding sliders? Anything I missed? I mean, ultimately, like my big thing, and this is what I try to stress to everyone, because being in charge of the sliders at Scarewinds, you know, I have a lot of monsters, just regular monsters. They love to come up to me and they, and they ask me, you know, what's it take? What do I got to do? What do I need to get? All these kind of things. And, and in, within those questions, I also get a lot of folks who tell me, no, oh, I'd love to do it, but I, I, I don't think I can. I just don't think that I can. I don't have the, the body type, or I don't have the athleticism, or I don't have this, or I, I just, you know, all these different things where they, they kind of cut themselves short. And, and I, I stress the point as often as I possibly can, give it a shot. No matter what, give it a shot. You know, like I said, at Scarewinds, we don't really have that, that rule in place for first years can't try out. You can try out. That is not a problem. And even if you don't make it into sliders, you're still going to get placed somewhere as a monster. That, that doesn't change. So it's not like, you know, if you don't make it as a slider, you're done. Like, that's not the case. So I try to stress to everyone that I can, if you want to try, there's no harm in trying. Go for it and just see what happens. Even if you don't make it, the season that you try out, come back next season. Do it again. There's there's nothing that says that you can't. Mm -hmm. Always just keep trying. Always come back and try again. Because our slider program, I, you know, I can only speak from our program at Scarewinds. Our program is only going to stay alive as long as we have new people coming in wanting to try it. Like I, like I said earlier, I, I was fresh out of knee surgery. I, 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 my, my knee surgery was so extensive that when I was going through physical therapy, I quite literally had to learn how to walk again. And within a span of time with, you know, a, a few months after that, I was on the ground sliding. I mean, there's nothing that says you can't do it. The only thing that's holding you back is yourself. Wow. Well, thank you so much for your time today, bud. You, you've taught me a lot that I didn't know about sliding before. 
And it's just, it's always interesting to hear about all that and all the great stories you have. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It was, it was my pleasure. I'm, I'm always happy to talk about sliding. It's sometimes it's hard to get me to shut up. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> for being honest. Well, that's going to wrap it up here on Hot Culture. If you're a slider and you'd like to share your stories, experiences, please comment down below. If you want to see us make another episode going more in depth, talking to other sliders as well, uh, let us know. If you want to watch more slider videos, the documentary we spoke of, Sliders of Ghost Town Origins, link is in the description below, along with the Scare Wins the Series episode that talks about sliders. So lots more videos you can watch down below. Keep it spooky.